I got to tell you, folks, I'm stunned, I'm surprised, I'm shocked. I thought that Al Franken would try to hang in there for another week. I thought he would try to make it past December 12th because that's the key date. If Al Franken, I told Snurdly, as I was all ready for Franken to continue to stay in the Senate and not resign, defy his party, I told Snurdly, I told Snurdly before the purchase to get it on record why I thought Franken would do that. Turns out I was wrong. Okay, so Franken buckled to the pressure of his own party. Even a personal plea from Focahontas, Elizabeth Warren, for Franken to step aside. Now, here's the thing about this, folks. Yeah, we had a seventh and an eighth woman surface this week with explicit claims and details about the mistreatment they experienced at the hand and mouth of Al Franken. But I don't believe that all of these, what's the number up to now, 38 Democrats demanding the, I don't think it's about him. I don't think the Democrat Party standing up now in so-called righteous indignation. This, this, this sudden demand that Frank and leave and get out of town as fast as he can. I don't think it has anything to do with the Democrat Party and decency and justice. I don't think it has anything to do with female senators and their power or any of that. This is all about one thing. And it's why I thought that Al Franken would hang on. This is all about Roy Moore. This is all about the Democrats' desperate effort to contrast the way they handled the Franken thing and the way the Republicans are handling the Roy Moore thing. And then in an ancillary way, the way the Republicans are not dealing with the Trump thing. It is clear that the Democrats looked at Franken. All this talk about he was a potential presidential candidate in 2020, an upcoming Democrat star. All of that, obviously, total BS. Because they're happy to get rid of him because they're not losing a seat. There's a Democrat governor in, in Minnesota that's going to name Franken's replacement. I don't know if it's going to be John Conyers' son. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to. It, Keith Ellison is the name that's being bandied about. But regardless, the Democrats are going to hold the seat. So Franken became expendable. Franken became a pawn. Franken became a non-entity. Franken became a nobody to them. At the end of the day, they didn't care about Al Franken. The end of the day, they don't care about individuals. They never let Al Franken face his accusers. You know, Franken wanted to go to the ethics community. He wanted these allegations examined. He claimed all along that he would be found innocent. But they weren't going to let that happen. No ethics committee, no Franken being allowed to hold on. No Al Franken not be allowed to face his accusers. Al Franken gone. See you later, Al. Maybe you could call Lorne Michaels at Saturday Night Live and get a gig there again. Just tossed Franken aside. And it was a groundswell that happened in the last couple of days. And I'm telling you, it isn't about any newfound decency on the part of the Democrat Party or newfound morality. It is all about Roy Moore because... The polling data that's out there in Alabama, they are convinced that Moore is going to win. So now they're going to try to turn what they think is going to be a Roy Moore victory into an albatross around the Republicans' necks. And it began today by telling Al Franken to take a hike. Look at this story. This is the Washington Post. White women in Alabama have made up their minds about Roy Moore. This headline is filled with spite, spittle, and disgust. The Washington Post is livid. White women, probably Christians and a bunch of racists, 
have already made up their minds about Roy Moore. And the Washington Post is livid that white women in Alabama are not listening to them. And it was a Washington Post poll. Shows that nearly six in ten white women in Alabama are likely to vote for Roy Moore. After the 2016 presidential election, women on the left called out the 53% of white women who helped elect Trump over Clinton. Last spring, actress Tina Fey warned white college-educated women who had supported Trump that their votes would have negative consequences for them. Why, why does anybody care what a TV comedian thinks about any of this? Why the hell should anybody care what some TV actress has to say about anything? It, it, this is no different than, than, than taking public opinion from Twitter and assigning it automatic credibility. So anyway, you white women in Alabama, you have become the enemy. You're idiots. You're racists. And probably sexists, and you're blindly... What these people in the media don't, if they would have just shut up, if the media would have just reported this 10% of the way they did, there might be a whole different take going on in Alabama. But what the, the media in so many parts of this country is so distrusted and so despised and so disliked that they create a backlash against themselves to the point whatever they want is the exact opposite of what people do. Now, it could be that the media is playing a psych game here, knows that full well, and wants Roy Moore elected. I don't think so. I think the media wants to be able to claim they got his scalp. I think the media would love to be able to say they defeated Roy Moore with their coverage. And their coverage is being ignored here, and white women say they're going to vote for Moore anyway, and I get ticks them off. So anyway, they're planning on more winning. That means Franken has to go. Conyers had to go. That meant Franken had to go. You can't kick out the octogenarian black guy and leave in the pencil IQ senator white guy from Minnesota. You, you, you can't do that. None of the Democrat side where identity politics is everything. This is also about, I think, Kristen Kirsten Gillibrand, she's serious about being in the race for the Democrat presidential nomination 2020. And I think a public position here on the reprobate Al Frank and how he's got to go is uh, all part of that. But I told Snurdly, and Snurdly can confirm this on Twitter where he hangs out. I told him if, 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 if Franken could just hang on. To to December 12th, when the election happened, whatever happened, more wins, more loses, it doesn't matter. When the election's over, the Democrat braying against Franken would go away. Because that's all this is about now. No, 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 I don't have any sympathy for Franken, that's not the, but I'll tell you, I'll I'll tell you what, this is, it is noteworthy, I believe, that this party... Republicans have been known to do this for a long time, but it's noteworthy here, the Democrats, there was no, I mean, they didn't even have a second thought to anything approaching due process. The word of these women was automatically accepted. Franken was not allowed to challenge them directly. He was not allowed to have them uh, present their evidence to the ethics committee because they wanted him gone because they don't care about him. That's what this all boils down to. They care about the seat. They're going to hold on to the seat because it comes from Minnesota with a Democrat governor. So Franken became expendable in the furtherance of other Democrat Party agenda items. Franken's speech in the Senate just now was a combination pathetic, sorrowful, pitiful. I think he thought he was Richard Nixon at times. He clearly thinks he's a martyr, and he uh, uh, clearly has a very, very deeply held personal, uh, well, he's deeply hurt personally by what people he thinks loved him have done here. And so he thinks he's he's been martyred, and he's he played that card up pretty well. He also drew some analogies 
He said, it's quite ironic that on the day I resign, a political party is fully endorsing a man who uh, engaged whatever sexually with young girls in Alabama and a president who admitted to grabbing whatever. Trump never admitted doing that. Trump was describing what powerful entertainers can do if they want to. But to try to parse that as a losing cause, because people already think that Trump said that, describing his, uh, his own behavior. So we'll never know. We'll never know. What, but maybe we will. What if, if, if the Roy Moore election happens, regardless of the outcome, what if Franken, and by the way, he's entirely capable of this. After September 12th, the Roy Moore election, so forth and so on, Roy Moore uh, wins. I can see Franken, you know what? You know what? After this, I'm not leaving. I retract my resignation. If the Senate's going to seat this clown, there's no reason I should be quitting here. This is outrageous. Wouldn't be surprised whatsoever. Let me take a quick time out, my friends. We'll do that and be back and continue with all the rest of today's exciting excursion into broadcast excellence right after this. Now, a lot of you might have laughed when I said, you know, Franken might change his mind and not resign. Well, I want to play a couple of sound bites here for you from Senator Franken today. And you'll see why I opined as I did. Hear from his speech on the Senate floor about a half hour ago. Over the last few weeks, a number of women have come forward to talk about how they felt my actions had affected them. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, hold, 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 hold just a second. So let me, I'm, uh, 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 where is the one I'm looking for? Well, go ahead, I guess it's in this one. Go ahead, keep, keep, keep playing it. I was upset, but in responding to their claims, I also wanted to be respectful of that broader conversation because all women deserve to be heard. No, no, stop it, stop it. Go to, here, I want to get sound by 20. Time is of the essence on this program. I don't have a lot of it. Goes through. Grab sound by 20. This is the point I want to make. Let, play it. Three, two, one, hit it. I know in my heart that nothing I have done as a senator, nothing has brought this honor on, on this institution. And I am confident that the Ethics Committee would agree. Nevertheless, today I am announcing that in the coming weeks, I will be resigning as a member of the United States Senate. Stop the tape! In the coming weeks, I will be... Re- he has not resigned. He has stated his intention to resign in the coming weeks. This means that Franken will still be able to vote, for example, on legislation, say the government shutdown, say the tax bill, if it ever gets out of conference committee, uh, any other item that comes up. In the coming weeks, the Roy Moore election in Alabama is five days from now, for example. So, depending on how that goes and how people react to that, Al Franken could easily change his mind and say, I just said I was going to resign in the coming weeks. But until he submits the papers, and even then, uh, now it's a long shot, I understand, but I think he's leaving the door open is the point here. He doesn't want to go, does not want to go. He doesn't want to go back to being a comedian. This, This made him, in his mind, somebody. You know, this... This made him a member of a club with only 100 members. And the last thing he wanted to do was go, and he still doesn't want to go. And he knows they're not forcing him out because they're really bothered by what he did. And that's got to be eating him alive. They're not asking him to leave because of what he did. I mean, ultimately, yeah. But they're not offended by what he did, these these women, these other Democrats. They're not offended by that. They see Franken resigning as a political opportunity. I'm telling you, it's all about Roy Moore, which then makes it all about Donald Trump. Grab audio soundbite number 21. This is uh, close to the wrap-up. Let me be clear. I may be resigning my seat, but I am not giving up my voice. I will continue to stand up for the things I believe in as a citizen and as an activist. 
But Minnesotans deserve a senator who can focus with all her energy on addressing the challenges they face every day. Now, the polling data on the 2020 senatorial election in Minnesota, at this stage, it doesn't look good for Franken. There is no guarantee that he would win re-election right now because of this. And in his remarks today, he alluded to the fact that really the mitigating factor here is the people of Minnesota and how much he treasures them and how much they mean to him and how honest and hardworking they are and how thus they deserve an honest and hardworking representative and senator. Uh, but this has caused problems for his reelection bid. It's not automatic. But you, you note here... Minnesotans deserve a senator who can focus with all her energy on addressing the challenges they face every day. Yeah, I have to think here that it's going to be a banner year for women uh, in Democrat electoral politics. You can almost make book on the fact that the Democrat presidential nominee is going to be a woman. And it's going to be either Kamala Harris, it's going to be Focahontas, or it's going to be Kirsten Gillibrand. Those are at least three. Now, there are going to be some men, obviously, who will run. And it's going to be fascinating to me to watch how the Democrat Party treats those men. Because when we get to 2020, which will start next year, when we get to the presidential cycle of 2020, the Democrats have set the table here for the fact that they had better, they had better nominate a woman. It was going to be Hillary in 2016, and it was. But she lost. She blew it. And there are going to be some Democrats think, hey, we've already done that. You know, we played the women card. We threw that down, and we've shown our diversity. We've shown our loyalty. We don't have to set ourselves up and limit ourselves by requiring and demanding a woman be our nominee. So there are going to be some guys that want this gig, too, although it would be hard to name them right now, but they will surface. So it's going to be, and of course, what happens in the 2018 midterms is going to be hugely determinant here. It's going to be a, 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 a big factor in what the Democrat presidential aspirations of 2020 look like. Because right now, the Democrats think they own it. They think they've won the House back already. They do this all the time. They won the governorship election in Virginia, and that they kept the seat. There was nothing earth-shattering about it. In Houston, this is Pat. Great to have you on the phone, sir. Hi. Yeah, hi, Rush. Mega dittos. Um, yeah, this, uh, the Al Franken uh, situation, among everything else that's, that's wrong with Al there, is, it just gives me another example of how the Democrats will disregard an election results to serve their own needs. I mean, they haven't even asked what the people of Minnesota want. And then the, I guess the comparison is that the Republicans are saying, hey, let the voters in Alabama see what they want to do with Roy Moore. Well, I mean, with, that was a late arrival. Uh, the Republicans right. at first were fully prepared to uh, deny the people of Alabama their choice. Oh, but yeah. there's polling data in Minnesota doesn't look good for Franken. 2020, yep. he's up for re-elections. So they're, they're, they, they do have that. To, and Franken even made some, he made a very uh, roundabout reference to that. But, uh, look, you're, you're, you're right. Basically, the, the Democrats don't care about Frank, and all they care about is not losing the seat. And if they get rid of him, then they think they have the moral high ground going after Trump and Roy Moore, and they don't lose a seat because Franken will be replaced by another reprobate Democrat. Right, right. But you think Franken shouldn't go? Is that where you're going? You think the people of Minnesota being denied their senator they elected here? Is that where your point is? Yeah, I don't think he should go. I mean, in Franken's situation, it, uh, look, there's no cigar. There's no blue dress. I mean, we have a guy who was handsy at photo ops. Now, he's a creep. But they knew he was a creep when they elected him the first time. Well, wait, wait, did they? Well, he had an admitted history of drug and alcohol use, and he's an entertainer from a late-night party show, Saturday Night Live. And Those I mean, are all resume enhancements getting. on the Democrat side. <laughs> right. But, uh, but you know, his, I, I don't see that there's anything that is new here on Al Franken that people didn't really know about him when they first elected him. I mean, hey, what, let me ask you this. a new shocking moment with Al Franken? Hey, let me ask you. I, 
I think the biggest argument against Al Franken is Al Franken sent it, really. Just the idea that it never made sense. I mean, I, I, if, if I were Democrat, I'd have been embarrassed about it the moment they stole the 300 votes to give him the victory. Yeah. Well, but look, Franken let me ask you a question. Let's, let me ask you a question. Let's, let's say that Franken would have told him to pound sand, and I'm not going. I'm staying. I'm staying. I'm staying. And they got 38. Is that the latest count? 38 Democrats told him to, to, to get, and, and he said, no, no, I'm staying. What do you think? If you want him to stand tall here and say, I'm not denying the people that voted for me, they're not getting a say in this, and I'm not leaving until they tell me I'm out, and they can't do that till 2020. So you, Gillibrand and the rest of you, to take it somewhere else. What do you think would happen to the Democrat Party if Franken had stood his ground? Oh, well, they would, uh, I think they would start to implode, but, or, or they'd look weak backing off. But I think Franken's problem is that he's trying to think like a senator here, and he's stepping down. And if he was true to himself, he'd come out and say, look, I was, a, I was an idiot when you elected me, and I was acting like an idiot. So I'm going to stick around to be the idiot that you elected. I think he may still, because he said he's going to resign in the coming weeks. He still wants to vote on the tax bill, the government shutdown. And maybe if he decided to stay, I don't know, I just came up with the question myself. I'll have to, I'll have to think about it. But if he decided to say, defy Schumer, because that's who would be defying He'd be defying Schumer and then whoever Schumer's second in command is. I don't even know. Who's who, who's the deputy uh, leader in this? That's right. It's Turbin. Dick Turbin. That's right. So he'd be defying Schumer and Turbin. And he would also be defying Focahontas and uh, Macy, the, the Hawaiian senator, and, and uh, Gillibrand. And McCaskill. McCaskill. She might have gotten in a family private plane and buzzed his house in Minnesota. Uh, I don't know. It, it, it was fascinating. If he refused to go, well, they they would have they they would have to come up with some strategy. Either that it would, it would be, I think, if if they're true to why they want him to leave, and it's clear to Dex so that they can, from a moral high ground, attack Trump and Roy Moore, then they have to continue attacking him. They have to continue putting pressure on him until he does leave. I think that's what, and it would be ugly. Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> somebody got to him. I mean, you're right. If 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 he if he was really thinking, he well, on second thought, citing Clinton would have been great. But the problem with that is gone back and revisited Clinton, and the media has said, we blew it. We should have told Clinton to resign back then. So if he would have cited Clinton, the media would have been forced to treat Franken like they're now treating Clinton. Say, no, you got to go. We made a mistake then, and we're not going to compound it by, by, uh, by supporting you. It would have been fun to watch, which is kind of why I was hoping he would hang on. I was hoping he would hang on until at least after the Roy Moore election, which is just five days from now. And I'm I'm still telling you, he hasn't resigned. He 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 he, not technically. What he announced was his intention to resign in the coming weeks. I'm telling you, this guy has left himself an out. So the Roy Moore election is going to be the determinant here. If 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 Roy Moore loses, then Frank is okay. I got to quit. But if Roy Moore wins, he set the table for this today. It's ironic that I'm resigning when the Republican Party is prepared to elect a child molester. He set the table for not leaving today, depending on that election. You mark my words. Half my brain tied behind my back just to make it fair. El Rushbo in the fastest three hours in media. And we head back to the phones. This is uh, this is Kevin in North Attleboro, Massachusetts. Great to have you. How you doing? Thanks, Russ. An honor to talk to you. Listen, I think, remember when uh, Nancy Pelosi was singing the praises of Conyers and Al Franken and Conyers was an icon, and two days later she just totally flipped I think that 
Chuck Schumer must have called her, got her behind closed doors, and who knows what happened there. I don't even want to think about that. But I think that because he felt that he was going to lose this tax plan. Wait a minute. Did you, just, did you just try to create a picture of Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi <laughs> behind closed doors? I must be a little slow on the uptake today because I just, I I just started that. envisioning that. <laughs> it's like we thought. Uh, but anyway, I, some people I might call that sexual harassment. Just I, exactly creating exactly. the thought, it's, it's yes. fitting to the story. Uh, but be, that's beside the point. I think that uh, Schumer has realized he's lost this tax plan bill, and he's starting to target, uh, that's the wrong word to use, he's trying to now go after the women's vote for 2018. He's given up on the tax bill, and now he's trying to strategize how to get the women's vote for uh, 2018 by dumping these people who have had accusations made to them. I have just a, a, a slightly different take. It's one of degrees. I think the Democrats think they own the women's vote, and they're trying not to lose it. Uh, and I think they're looking at, at Roy Moore as an opportunity to shore up the women's vote even more. Now, you have, yeah. you have Pelosi. So Pelosi's instincts are, are vividly on display here. Franken and, uh, and Conyers, well, let's talk Conyers because he's in the House. Conyers gets in trouble. Pelosi's natural instinct as a political warrior, is to defend the guy no matter what, because over her dead body are the Republicans going to be able to take one of her people out. Doesn't matter what he did, doesn't matter who he is, the Republicans aren't going to take him out. That's her natural instinct, and it's every Democrat's natural instinct. They will defend no matter what it is, rather than allow the Republicans to take any of their people out. They're going to take them out if they're going to be taken out, not the Republicans. So then maybe you're right. Schumer calls her. They have a conference, and uh, he reads her the riot act and details the long-form strategy. She's not in the best of shape in the House either. There's a lot of people want her gone simply because she's uh, Jurassic Park, and they want, they want more youthful leadership because the millennial vote uh, is important to them. And old people get moved. Once, you know, the 1849 demographic, once you're out of that, how old are you? I'm 66. Okay, so you and I don't count anymore. You know, once you're past the 18 to 49 demographic, they don't care about you anymore. Advertisers, uh, politics, all of that. They just assume that you're who you are. They can count on you. But they're, right. they're giving up trying to persuade you. 1849, that's what they focus on. Pelosi's yep. long past 49. So the... Business about defending Conyers and two days later deciding to throw him overboard. Probably the result of what you say, Schumer sits her down and says, look, this, we can't defend this given everything else that we've been trying to do with Trump. And she sees the light. Conyers has to go. They forgot to factor in the congressional black Caucasians. They did, they goofed this up in any number of ways. Well, just to kind of back up what I was saying though, this morning I saw on Fox a poll at 77% of Democrats are in favor of ousting these people being accused of sexual harassment. And 51% of Republicans are in favor of that. And I think they're going to run with this narrative throughout the whole next year, right up until Election Day. Well, I don't doubt it. But that yeah. 77% of Democrats, is there's a reason for that. The Democrats have made this an issue. Feminism, pro-choice, and all this, they've made it. These 77% of Democrats are just being loyal. Right. That, that they're kind of getting hoisted on their own petard here. They never, I'll guarantee you, they never expected this Weinstein stuff to drop or this Matt Lauer stuff to drop. They thought they'd be able to protect that. Right. Even while they zeroed in on Trump and Roy Moore. So well, I think, I think, uh, they're, they, they think they've got the women's vote and they're trying not to lose it, which is why you can bank on the fact that they're going to, pull out all the stops to make sure their presidential nominee in 2020 is yet again a woman, particularly if uh, if Trump decides to, to run again. But I think they're making a bunch of assumptions that are wrong, and they're making these assumptions way too soon. For example, they think, they really, folks, do not doubt me, they think they have won the House in 2018. 
They hate Trump, and so they think everybody else does. The reasons they hate Trump, they think are the reasons everybody else hates Trump. They hate Republicans, and they think they have succeeded with their buddies in the media in making everybody else hate Republicans. They think the Virginia gubernatorial election is the sign that the country has admitted its mistake and is ready now to get back to normal and elect Democrats to run Washington, D.C. So they have made this assumption. They want it to be true so badly that they actually think that they are there and they aren't. I don't think the Democrats, I really don't. The evidence is all around them, and I think they're in denial. The DNC can't raise any money. The RNC, as unpopular as it is among rank-and-file Republicans, is out raising the Democrats. The Democrats, the amount of money they're raising is not worth much more than an asterisk in, uh, in the most recent reporting. They're just, they're having all kinds of trouble raising money of the $10, 20 $50 variety from average ordinary Democrats. I mean, they've still got their Hollywood, uh, the usual wealthy donors from all the different Democrat groups, but they do not have the donations of average run-of-the-mill Democrat voters, the base, if you will. And so they know this, but I don't think they tell themselves the truth about what it means. They have shown the ability to lie to themselves over and over again for the express purpose of shielding the pain and making themselves feel better. And because they think that they've come back, they're looking at Franken and all these others, a liability. They've won it. 2018, it's in the bank, but not if Franken stays. So Franken's got to go. And then there's also the Roy Moore calculation that they're, they, uh, they are making here. So there's a couple more observations about Franken real quick to buttress my theory that his resignation hasn't happened yet. He took that floor in the United States Senate, and he spent the bulk of his time building himself up and talking about what a champion for women he is and has been, what a great guy he is, and what he's learned, and how much he cares about representing people in Minnesota. Selfless warrior, he described himself. There was no apology. No apology. He didn't acknowledge that one thing these women were saying is true. He questioned the memories of these women's uh, the stories. And he, he claimed to be a champion of women and women's rights. He said some of these things are just flatly untrue, and the others, I just don't remember them that way. So that's essentially calling them liars. That speech of his was to repair damage to him. Well, it depends on how you want to look at it. I mean, you you could say that the Republicans, by opposing Roy Moore at the outset, were prepared to make a political sacrifice. I mean, by opposing Roy Moore, they were basically ceding the Senate election Alabama to the Democrat. At first, you could say that was a show of principle, but that's not their position now, is it? The position now is it's up to the people in Alabama to decide, and we, meaning Mitch McConnell and uh, guys, we're going to back off, and we're going to let Steve Bannon determine what happens down there. And whatever that is, we'll live with it. And if Moore gets elected, (laughs) his first stop's going to be the Ethics Committee, where we're going to harangue this guy so long he'll never have a chance to be sworn in. Isn't that pretty much the official republic i mean that that's what they're saying well okay not the official but isn't mitch mcconnell been quoted as as referencing the fact that moore is going to have to go before the ethics committee the likelihood if he if he wins the the point that i'm talking about an email i got an email from the, at the top of the program in the break here at the top of the hour that uh the democrats are trying to get away with occupying moral high ground when they're not losing anything by getting rid of these guys. They're not, they're not losing anything by getting rid of Franken. And they're not losing anything by getting rid of Conyers. But the Republicans, according to the email, were willing to lose a Senate seat to maintain their morality by opposing Roy Moore. And the emailer says, you need to point this out. Republicans deserve credit. The Democrats are a bunch of phonies. 
Well, look, if if <laughs> I think the Republicans should be happy that there's anybody out there that wants to look at them that way in this. But why are you frowning? Why is something not uh, registering with you on this? <clears throat> well, that, it, what was stupid? What was the stupid political play? All th- throwing away the Senate. You mean it was stupid to stand on the high moral pedestal and to say, we don't want you, Roy Moore. We're not going to let you in here. Who do you think you are? We don't want you. That that was a phony baloney, stupid mistake to make, given the, we're at war with the Democrats. All right, well, we'll see. There's some interesting stuff about Alabama here today. By the way, greetings and welcome back. Uh, Rush Limbaugh at 800-282-2882 if you want to be on the program. This story is from the Montgomery, Alabama Advertiser. An anti-Roy Moore ad is misinforming Alabama voters about their anonymity in the voting booth, according to the state's secretary of state, John Merrill. John Merrill's office on Tuesday released a statement on an ad representing a targeted effort to misinform and confuse voters. The ad featured a voiceover and a stand against Roy Moore graphic. The ad is paid for by a Doug Jones pack called Highway 31. And the ad basically said, your vote is public record and your community will know whether or not you helped stop Roy Moore. Well, now that's flat-out BS. Your vote is not public. Your vote is private. Now, they can tell whether you voted or not, but they can't legally go in there and find out how you voted. You have to tell them. So an ad was run. This is kind of, it was a shaming attempt. It's, It's kind of along the lines of people lying to pollsters because they're afraid the pollsters will find out what they really think. So if it becomes, well, look at Trump in the presidential race. I'm voting for Trump, but everybody in the media thinks I'm stupid, and it's embarrassing, so I'll lie, and I'll say I'm voting for Hillary. Don't want the pollsters to think, and don't want the media to think they're stupid. In this case, it's a reverse shaming effort. The Doug Jones pack is running an ad telling Alabama voters that if they vote for more, that everybody's going to know about it. And likewise, if they don't vote for more, everybody's going to know about it, and everybody's going to love them, and everybody's going to praise everybody that doesn't vote for more. Secretary of State made it clear that no individual voting record is made available to anyone at any time, including the voter who cast the ballot. When voters cast a ballot, the state of Alabama's voter registration system is updated to document the election that the voter participated in, but no record is made documenting the candidate for whom the ballot was cast. Your name is not on the ballot. Have you ever noticed this? People of Alabama might not have thought that far ahead. Uh, And then we have this story that I mentioned earlier from the Washington Post. White women in Alabama have made up their minds about Roy Moore. This is a story that just impugns white women as a bunch of racist clans people. White women have already made up their minds, meaning your minds are closed and you're for a bigot and for you're a sexual abuser and you don't care whether it's happening to people like you, other women. You're probably Christian, so you're dumb, you're stupid, you're a hayseed and a hick, and you're dangerous. And that's essentially the Washington Post story. That's uh, if there's a, you know, a tie with the Al Franken resignation, the threatened resignation and the Roy Moore vote. This is Jeremy in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Great to have you with us, sir. How are you? Thank you, Mr. Limbaugh. It's a great honor to speak with you. I've been a fan for a long time. Well, thank you. I've actually... I've actually had all mention of your name banned by one of my professors this semester because your analysis is, is always so rock solid. So I, I appreciate everything you do. Uh, 
what I wanted to say was I, I'm just I'm over static. I'm I'm completely overjoyed. I'm going to take my kids to get ice cream. I'm letting them get two scoops today, Mr. Rimball, because I, I've heard everything you said. I know it's not a done deal, but I'm telling you, I've been waiting for this ever since this guy stole the election. It could not have happened to a more arrogant, uh, hypocritical, high on his horse, condescending hack limousine uh, liberal. I, I just, uh, uh, I think that he's had it coming, and if, if, if at the very least. He, this guy can no longer grandstand and talk down to good men. I, I believe that all this is... Uh, it, it, Wait a minute. I don't... Who are you talking about, Obama? I'm talking about Al Franken. Oh, uh, uh, oh Al yes, Franken. Sir. Yeah, I, I, ever since this guy, I mean, he's just, I've always thought he was a, a, a political hack from his days of, you know, SNL and the things that he's done. When he stole the election, he's just... And the way I've seen him talk down to good men, you know, uh, uh, in some of these congressional hearings and things like that. You're thinking the way he's uh, talked down to Jeff Sessions, I bet, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and, and I think at the very least, even if, you know, somehow he worms his way out and doesn't resign, I don't think he's ever going to be able to take that kind of position and, and, and preach to people and grandstand. And I just think that this guy has had it coming and uh, when, when I saw yesterday that all his colleagues were coming against him, it was just, it's like Christmas coming early, Mr. Limbaugh. I'm just, oh, I'm overjoyed. You know, I appreciate you being honest about this. Uh, a lot of people would say, well, I'm very sorry when this kind of thing happens to anyone. You really hate to see it. While privately, you're thinking exactly like you are. But you had the courage to call here and actually tell the truth about your happiness and your satisfaction and even the schadenfreude of the just desserts being handed out to Stuart Smalley. Uh, so I, I, I appreciate your forthrightness and, uh, and your honesty, and I understand it. I, I, a lot of people had no idea who Al Franken was until the Jeff Sessions testimony when Franken started berating him, and it, it, it was over this Russia stuff and connections and the insinuations that Franken was making against Sessions. So I, I understand how you feel about this. But he's not gone yet, Jeremy. And he didn't apologize for anything. He essentially said that the women who are telling these stories are lying. He didn't use the word. He said, I don't remember it the way they do. And he used this resignation speech to build himself up as a great champion of women. So he still has a distance to fall here. If that you, you, Meaning you still have opportunities to be even happier than you, uh, than you are today. Well, that's it, folks. Another exciting excursion into broadcast excellence, sadly coming to a close causes people to tear up and cry in certain areas of the country, but it's not necessary because we're back in uh, 21 hours. It'll be open line Friday tomorrow. And if I was coming down with something, I'd beat it back because I feel okay now. So we'll see you tomorrow.